Does she come forward? Does she come forward with life? Does she just kind of come forward dull and not so enthusiastic? If I turn towards the horse with my frontal plane, I really need her to keep her nose between the shoulder and I'd like to set the rope up with just enough slack or belly so that if she did take her nose to the right or the left of her shoulder, I'd be able to encourage her to come back center again. Let's try walking forward. This time I'm gonna turn my frontal plane away from her. It's almost like I have a headlight on my chest and now I'm turning the headlight towards my horse. So I can see she's looking over the top of me so I'll walk forward again, turning my frontal plane. If I slow down, she needs to slow down. Turn, stop, keep the life up and back. Keeping the nose between the shoulder. Notice the head comes back to center. Head comes down because she's more focused. Lost her attention a little bit. See if I can tip it back. We'll see if I can have her tip her attention over more to the camera. How far can she look over her left? Wait for the ear, there it is. Let's walk forward, turning my frontal plane away, keeping my head up always, looking back at the horse. Always knowing where is the horse. Is she with me? Is she too far back? Is she creeping up? Good. Turn back. See if I can direct her attention to the side. Good. Let's see if I can direct her attention back to her right. A little more, we'll wait for that ear, for that ear to come around. There, took a little bit of work. Sometimes you have to hang in there. I could feel that she was ready to look, but she was confused, so she was taking the life to her feet and I needed her to just stay in place. She's a little more clear on it now. A lot more clear on it. Helping with my other hand a little bit. See if I can have her look over to her left. Good. Doing this can really cause a horse to relax. It can be, it can be something that you can use to get that horse to settle. Because they've got to relax, so that they can bend that far. They need to relax. And then she'll come back to center. The head will probably come down. And I'll rub that forehead a lot. This is preparing her for a bridling position. So it'd be really easy to take my rope, set my rope up to where it simulates a bridle. Put that rope in there. Of course she wants to spit it out, but if she drops her head down or comes back to center, I'll let that go. So it's a good opportunity for me to get that rope around her head. And maybe they can get used to the human and some of the weird things that humans do. And if you ever thought about it from the horse's perspective, a lot of what we do is pretty strange to a horse. Just seeing if she can handle the rope going behind her, tipping her attention. She's looking for that place of relaxation. And you can see a little bit of a mental change there. Pretty soon, you don't need to touch them. They understand, look how relaxed that made her. Oh, and she blows a little air out of the nostrils, sort of letting down a little bit. And she still wants to look around and she is still looking around but she's doing it with her head down. There, it's a good change there. See how little I can do to get her to, to just flex left, flex right. You're still drawing the attention. It's not, just, it's not just the body of the horse that we're working with, we're working with the mind first. Like to see her expression perk up a little bit, see her life come up a little. Good, and when it does, I relax and settle back down. It's 
bringing her life up, seeing if she can, can handle that and come back down. Then I settle, turn my frontal plane towards her. Of course, look at the position with her head. That's something we worked on. I'm still ready for her nose to go to the right or the left of her shoulder. It's looking pretty nice. It's looking pretty good. So she remembers that. She says, that feels good. I wanna be, I wanna be straight and relaxed down low. She says, that feels good to be there. And on these young ones, this might be a good place for her to go. And if she's nervous, can she default to her nose being straight between the shoulder down low, see? And if I suggest it, if I reach up or if I drop my posture, bring my attention down, she'll bring her attention down. She didn't always do that. One thing is if you're training in a way that the horse is relaxing as you go, it's therapeutic. Of course, it feels good and they're relaxed, so that's important. But now the horse can really give you those movements that you want because they're in a relaxed state. Walk forward. If I step around, I wanna see your hindquarters just offset a little bit. Now, we could work this from a distance and if I just step, make an arc to my left, she'll cross those hind legs just a little bit, offset the haunch. If I keep her life up and I turn my frontal plane towards her, lead her off to my right, maybe we could send her off on a circle. Looking at her expression, her eyes and her ears, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on the circle. So when she's going along and I'm happy, I stay in the center of the circle. Yeah, I might move my feet in a small circle or I might just pivot in place, but it's very important that when you'd like the horse to come to you, step out of the center. She crosses the hind legs a little bit. She comes to me, frontal plane. Ah, good, the head comes down. Oh, and she smells the ground, that's interesting. Oh, she licks and chews, so I might just walk away from her here because Take, I can take some pressure off of her. I just did something that involved work and pressure, movement. She came in, she put her head down, so I walk, I walk away. If I go slow, I'd like her to go slow. She's doing a good job of keeping that nose between the shoulders and keeping the attention down towards me. How about a backup? I'll stand tall. I'll expand my spatial bubble, so to speak. Back, good. Step her back, see if I could step her back and take her shoulder over. Good, I'll go the other direction. I'll take her back. I'll take her right front leg over. Just see if I can get her to turn. One more step, st there. When we're backing a horse up, the foot that's furthest forward is the easiest foot to move over. So her left front foot can step over very easy right there, it's very easy to do. Good, good, I like how she sort of went forward. So I'll just leave the center of the circle again. She comes to me, stop, turn my frontal plane, and she goes, I'll put my head down low for you. And I th think that's a good thing. Reach up, of course she puts her head down. They don't mind this, secret weapon. Something that's fun to do is to take the stirrup and simulate your leg and how your leg might work and move. Now, we could ask the hindquarters to swing over so she steps the left hind leg under a step or two. We could float all four legs over, just the hindquarters. Notice I step back more. If I take my frontal plane, my chest, direct it more forward, she could go forward. If she doesn't respond, I can take that stirrup and bump her like my leg would. 
if I take my frontal plane towards the girth or the cinch, she'd move over to the side. Of course, the direction of my feet go more to the barrel, to the ribs. So if I'm stepping back further, that would be hindquarters. If I step in towards the cinch, that might be all four legs moving over. Notice I'm lifting my posture. When I'm happy with her movement, I fall back to my heels and settle a little bit. She's still walking. I'll just get out of the center, bring her to me. So she's licking and chewing a little bit. That's good. Turn the frontal plane to her and halt. Slowly I'll take a shorter, slightly shorter hold, get closer to her. We'll transition back into forward motion. I've got the stirrup. If I take my chest and point it more towards the back cinch or the hindquarters, she might cross the hind legs or if I direct my chest more at the cinch, we might go more to the side. And if I direct my chest more forward, she might go more forward. But I think of it this way, when she offers forward, I stop and let her settle. And it's like I'm preserving it for later. It's like I'm, I'm bottling, I'm packaging it up for later so that later on when I present the idea to her of moving forward with life, she'll probably give it to me.